Welcome back to my channel. Now, I usually am roasting people, you know, saying this about them or that about them. But today we're gonna talk about roasts, like a roast in a pan with potatoes and carrots and the foods that my mother made and the foods that my mother didn't make because we ate out a lot. Although I eat most meals out, I know lots of people do that nowadays, especially when you live alone. I'm in Santa Monica, California, you know, it's a lot of business meetings and meeting friends for dinner or for lunch. But I do love to cook. I really love to cook. However, I like to cook when it's that magnificent dream kitchen and also use every utensil known to man, everything they sell. I want it all. When I dip that tasting spoon in something and I taste it, I just want to toss it aside. I don't want to clean up. No way. Who wants to clean up all that mess? But I do feel like it's a lot of work. Do all this work and you first you have to buy the stuff. Then you have to bring it home. Then you put it away. Then you get it back out. Then you cook it. Then you make a big mess. And then you eat it. And 20 minutes later, it's done. You have to really enjoy that meal and enjoy the process of cooking. Otherwise, it's just a big waste of time. For me, it's really difficult to keep things. If I buy a loaf of bread, which I never do, I eat four slices and then that's it. It just gets moldy and goes bad. I throw out more groceries, more food from my refrigerator and I feel horrible because there are so many homeless people in Santa Monica, they call it the home of the homeless. I should be giving it to a shelter or dropping it off somewhere, but they don't wanna take it. There's so many rules and laws about all that stuff, they won't take it. So it's, it's sad. So sometimes it's just easier to eat out and you bring the leftovers home and you have dinner again the next day and then that's it, you start the whole process over again. It is so difficult to cook, you have no idea. So I have this gorgeous oven, can you, can you see back there? I don't know. But obviously in the home that I build, I will have a wall oven. So I had to go out and get, I didn't set it up yet, but I have one of those air fryer broil bake things so that I can reach into it or I will burn my entire arm. The first night I was in my new place, I had to call 911. I almost burned the whole condo down. I opened the door to put my arm in, realized I was gonna burn myself, shut it, and then the piece of pizza just blew up. It was crazy. And there was smoke everywhere and the alarms went off. And very first night, that's what happened. See, so it was easier to just call and order pizza, right? Right. I have trouble getting things out of drawers, uh, putting things away, getting stuff out of the cabinets. Uh, it's really hard. I just can't reach to the back of the shelves. There's a lot of storage, there's great room, but I can't reach it. So what good is it? Everything has to be to the very front. Even in the refrigerator, the doors on the sides are just filled with everything because I can't reach far enough to the back of the fridge on the shelves. It's hard, people don't realize. Nobody has any idea what you go through in a wheelchair and the bottom of my chair where the foot plates are and the little extra wheels in the front, they hit everything. I don't wanna whine and complain because I know people have it worse than I do, but for myself, I never realized it. I never realized what people in a wheelchair go through. Growing up, my mother, Mary and Lorraine, Mary and Lorraine Dance Studio, her maiden name was McKay, so it was Swing and Sway with Mary and McKay. She was a pioneer in her own right. She started her dance studios in Miami at 18 years old, supported her family, paid the bills. I'm not gonna talk about that now, that'll be another video. However, when my mom was in Pittsburgh running her studio, several, like four or five at the one time, my mother made like six things. That was it. She made meatloaf, stew, chili, spaghetti, but my dad had this thing that we had spaghetti and pork chops. Spaghetti and pork chops, spaghetti and pork chops. And nobody else even knew what that was, but they just repeated. Like every other week. And that's why we went out. We belonged to a country club in our neighborhood and they had a great chef and really good food. Everybody else went there to play golf. It was like crazy golfers. We went there to eat. And you could always go there when you didn't have any money because you just signed your number. That was it. It was great. 
and I have lost credit cards. I have lost my social security card. I have had new numbers on my everything. Even my passport was stolen going to Australia. Everything has been replaced over the years, everything, except my number at the club, 1599-1599, that was it. And it never changed and the club is no more and the golf course is no more and it's very sad because I grew up there. I had a lot of memories at the pool, on the swim team. My dad was in charge of the swim team and eating there. So my mom and I, or my mom and dad and I, or people from the studio that my mother would treat to dinner, we went there constantly. We also were huge fans of Pizza Hut. People freak out right now when they're, they're gonna say, we're gonna order pizza. I'm like, Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut. Why, with all these pizza places in my town, were we fans of Pizza Hut? Well, because the guy that lived up the street, Al Lee, Alan Lee, he bought the first Pizza Hut franchise in our area. And it was right down the street from the dance studio. So that was my mom. Like she wasn't the one that was at home cooking all the time, like everybody else's mom. And when they sat down to dinner as a family, my mother was at the dance studio till let's say 8.39, 9.30 at night. And on the way home, we would always stop at a place called King's. And then we would stop at Eaton Park. And Eaton Park had the big salad bar. And Eaton Park had a good fish sandwich and salads. And it was the only place in town that was open until midnight, or I think on the weekends it was 24 hours. And that's where you would go after the recital. So my mom's recipes, I have been craving her chili. I've been craving her stew. Uh, stuffed peppers, that's the other thing. Stuffed peppers, that's what she made. My mother's recipes are hacks before there were hacks. She took the easy way out, right? Now, you kids probably aren't gonna get this, but stuffed peppers, right? You have to put rice in them, and we didn't have rice in my house. My dad fought in Pearl Harbor, World War II. And my mom and dad both grew up during the Depression. So things like noodles, rice, like all those types of things, they were considered what you ate when you were poor. Now here we are in a global pandemic again, and people are having trouble getting meat. People are having trouble at the grocery stores. The shelves are bare. It's the same thing as it was. History is repeating itself. Whether it's a pandemic or whether it's a war or whether it's the oil thing with the gas prices and all that, it just comes full circle over and over. But back to the stuffed peppers. So, so instead of making rice and the ground meat and blah, 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 she just took a can of tomato rice soup. The rice is already in there. So you ground the meat, put some salt and pepper in it, you dump it in a can of tomato rice soup, you mix it up, you boil the peppers to get them a little soft, you put them in a meatloaf pan, right? You fill them up with the mixture, and then you take a can of regular Campbell's tomato soup, and you pour it on top to make that, that glaze thing on top of each one. There you go, done. 15, 20 minutes. And we always had it with mashed potatoes and creamed corn. I love to cook because I wanted to taste my way and the way I remember my mother making things, even though she wasn't the greatest cook. And even though, you, okay, I have to tell you one thing. So my dad, he used to say to people out in public that my mother, that she could clean the entire house with a Kleenex while she was on the phone. Now, this is the phone that's attached to the wall in the kitchen with a big long cord so you could walk maybe into your dining room or your living room. So he was digging her. He was berating her. He thought he was being funny. By saying that it meant that she wasn't doing too good of a job, that she didn't use, you know, the pledge and the and the spray and the this and the that and the broom and the mop and the bucket. No. And I know when I was little, I don't remember doing this, but my mother tells the story all the time. I used to play in the drapes like hide in the curtains, the drapes, and they're very expensive, elaborate draperies. And I used to get in big trouble for that. And I remember later in life, when she was much older and my dad was ill, helping her clean the drapes. Everybody knows me in the dance world, the dance community, and I talk about dance 24 seven. This was a little different today. So if you liked it, comment below. And if you want any of the recipes, I'd be happy to share.